So even if we have a connected network, it's possible for a network to be unhealthy even though all of the nodes on it can communicate with each other. It could be that traffic communication is slow or that lots and lots of information is just dropped. And so a good question might be, how would you measure that? How would you figure out the difference between a healthy and an unhealthy network? And if you've dealt with issues like lag, then you'll have a good rough understanding of what might clearly define an unhealthy network. In network engineering, there are some pretty common tools used to describe network performance, and these can be useful indicators. Uh, link bandwidth is how much, uh, how many bits per second you can send down a connection. A propagation delay is how long it, it takes a bit of information to be sent from you to some other target. The transmission time for a packet can be how long it takes the entire packet of information to be transmitted. The queuing delay is how long it takes some stop along that uh, along a, a route uh, to process that packet and the processing time is how long it takes um, a switch or a router along that uh, along that path to actually process it. We can visualize it using a timing diagram which looks a little bit like this. So if we send a bit of information what we can see is that the transmission time is just the ratio of the propagation delay to the bandwidth. So um, the bandwidth again is just how many bits per second we can send down a connection and the propagation delay is how long it takes us to send a bit of information down that same connection. Um, for an example, here's two. The top one has a very, very, uh, a very, very high, um, a very, very high bandwidth. It's one gigabyte per second and a small packet size. Um, it's uh, only one kilobyte and that means practically that the transmission time, the time it takes for us to send a packet down a hundred kilometer long piece of wire is way longer than how long it takes us to push that information onto the connection itself. If we contrast that with the example down the bottom, um, down here, we can see that we have the same size packet but now our bandwidth is much reduced and our connection is much shorter. That means the m amount of time limiting this transfer is actually just getting the information on the network. Once it's on the network, it's transmitted very, very quickly uh, because the connection is not so long. So different uh, kinds of connections can be characterized using these different measurements. Um, we can see the effect of this if we queue up packets down a network of varying bandwidth. So what you can see at the top of the screen is a series of connected hops along a pathway um, that have different bandwidths. Once we send one packet, uh, it essentially it transmits and is transmitted by each node as fast as possible. The catch is, what happens when we send a second packet? Well, when we send a second packet, if there is a big delay, then that delay will actually propagate. And what you can see here is that the more packets we send subject to this network, our packets become spread out in time. And that means that our receiver must have a way of reassembling packets that appear dispersed in time um, into the appropriate order so that we can understand the information that we're getting. We can also use a variety of tools to measure this. So the delay is how long it gets for a bit to go from one point to another point. The jitter is how much variability there is in this. So maybe there's a network with a lot of interference and some packets get lost or just take longer to get through. The round trip time is the two way delay, how long it takes to get somewhere and then back. And the bandwidth delay product is how delayed is the information and how much of it can that we can we fit on the network. If it's very delayed and the network is very big, we can actually use that network to store a huge amount of information. Now, it's not as stably stored as it would be on a hard drive, but it is stored, like the network actually has information within it. Here's some example round trip times from Wellington. If you want to see an example of a step change in round trip times when new cables, new connections are being added.